Hey guys, how y'all doing? It's Tim from Docs Auto again, and we are not working on a BMW today. We are going back actually to uh, Docs Ag Repair, Docs Tractor Repair, whatever you want to call it. We have the old Cub Cadet 1872 with the 44 inch blower deck on for snow. And I ran into an issue in clearing uh, our driveway last week. It sort of uh, pooped itself. So here's where it sits. Big problem here is the gearbox for the uh, augers pretty much shredded itself. And I took it apart, pretty much everything as you see here, dirt included, it was full of snow, it was frozen. And I just wanted to get all of the uh, broken parts out of it and try and get an order in uh, for replacement parts because I still had the driveway to clear. Uh, the first problem we had was the probably the original roll pin in here for the shaft for the impeller uh, just fell off and broke off into a ton of pieces so at 4 30 on a Wednesday evening I'm rolling into the parts place the John Deere dealer of all places to try and find a roll pin uh, for a Cub Cadet case IH farm whatever you want to call that big conglomeration now and luckily we rooted through the parts boxes for about 15 minutes and I found a roll pin only to come back and completely shred the worm gear or the uh, drive gear in the uh, gearbox itself. So that should actually have teeth all the way around. And what happened in our wonderful Minnesota snow ice mix along with a uh, freshly made pad for our uh, future shop, AKA the parking lot right now, uh, ran into a bunch of gravel and just plugged the muck up and destroyed everything. So we went out to good old Amazon and found a uh, replacement gear. They are brass. So for better or worse, that is the point of failure versus destroying everything else. Personally, I'd rather keep rolling off shear pins, which did not fail this time. So, take out our new gear, and it looks a whole lot more like a gear. Teeth are all there, they're not rounded off, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just replace this on the main shaft here. I did go ahead and re get this cleaned up and prepped uh, just so we can slide the new gear on there and the, the keyway. Um, but also we've got to go through and clean up in this gearbox itself because there is tons of old garbage. Um, it looks like the gasket that was in here at one point in time failed. Uh, so went off to a parts tree uh, partstree.com and found the new gasket for uh, this here. It says rubber gasket, but it actually looks like it's cork. So whatever the case may be, we will go ahead and get this whole thing cleaned out and then start the reassembly process. Hello, Mr. Gear. So we will go ahead and uh, get working on that and get back to the assembly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get these things cleaned out first. No need to keep any of this garbage in here. There. One side cleaned out here, and you can see there's definitely remnants of the old brass gear getting shredded in here. So, uh, you know, I'll make a good attempt to get most of the stuff out of here, but it's not going to be perfect. I'll be perfectly honest about that right now, because really, this thing will go down the road at some point in time be replaced with a bigger, uh, more suitable tractor for our property. Uh, but I want to get it as good as I can now so it at least lasts for a couple more years. Go work on cleaning out the other side, I guess. You know, I'm actually thinking I'm going to, if I still have, have some, <clears throat> dip it in parts clean for a little bit and see what that does for me. Oh. Oh. 
Aha! Mighty jug of cleaner from Napa. Fits in the bowl. Oh, barely. All right. Cool. All right. Oh, that's interesting here. Noticing it's actually wearing through one half of the housing here uh, from inside. So take a look at that when I reassemble things. I'll see if we can fix that up. This is going to be cast, so I don't have anything here to weld it. Uh, but we'll see if we can uh, do something to clear up this hole for us here. Uh, for hopefully the next season here. But for now, let me let this stuff sit for, I don't know, 20 minutes, half hour. And in the meantime, watch something from uh, Randy at Auto Auction Rebuilds. So we will catch you very shortly. All right guys, I figured while I'm waiting for this, uh, we're waiting for these parts to soak, I may as well try and get the, get the gear back on the main, uh, main shaft here for the augers. And uh, here's our wonderful big steel shaft of goodness. We have our new gear here and uh, have our woodruff key. Now, so I need to tip, tip the uh, key down here just so we can get the gear on and then uh, tap it into place. Now brass is a, a softer metal so you don't want to beat the crap out of it. So you do need to be conscious of that. Uh, so what I've been doing is actually just set it, set the gear in my vise over here, uh, kind of sandwich it in like this, and then tap on the shaft itself uh, versus the gear. Uh, so that way, anything I'm beating on ends up being on the shaft, and I've got a good flat surface for this gear to rest on, uh, so I'm not potentially hitting it uh, off center with a hammer or uh, rounding off any of these teeth. I am sure somebody will condemn me for putting the, uh, the gear back on this way, but this is all I have. Uh, don't have a press, don't have any other larger tools to uh, press this back on. So my good old beater stick and uh, the vise here is what I have to use. So we'll go ahead and tap it back on lightly. And make sure the key doesn't slide out and give it a few little taps. See how we go. All right, and just like that, our gear is back in place and uh, I'm just going to measure the distance here to make sure that we are uh, pretty much even side to side. I think it's a hair off center. That's easy to fix. So we're just about an inch and an eighth on that side and about an inch and three sixteenths on this side. So I'm going to call that close enough after one more final little tap.
just over an inch and an eighth and just over an inch and eighth on this side. So I'm going to call this pretty good. I don't know that we need to go uh, exact perfect because there is some play of course here in this whole gearbox to begin with. Uh, so trying to get it within uh, thousands of an inch just is kind of useless. So otherwise we will wait for the rest of these parts to soak and then reassemble the gearbox itself with a new gasket and we'll fill it full of uh, gear oil. There uh, is a uh, IH or Cub Cadet branded 90 weight gear oil uh, that you should use in here. Uh, again, I'm not going to pay $35 for the, uh, the quart of that. It's about $30, $35. I have a bunch of uh, 85 weight gear oil for the uh, for the vehicles, uh, synthetic gear oil uh, for the pickup. So I'm going to use some of that in its place because again, this thing maybe gets used five or six times a year uh, of any significance. Uh, so I'm not terribly concerned about a little bit different weight of the oil or having it gel up in cold weather. So uh, we'll put that together uh, and be back shortly. All right, folks, it's just sat here for a while. We'll pull it out. Let it dripple a little bit. Now, I'm just gonna give a little brush inside here and then I'll go dip it once more. But uh, let's not tell my wife I may or may not have borrowed her toothbrush for this. No, I did not do that. I wouldn't do that to her. Great person. Basically, I just want to see if I can get anything else off of here that just a simple soak didn't uh, take care of. You can see some of the paint is coming off here. That's not a, a huge concern to me. I just want to try and get the gunk out um, inside. And I'll give it another quick rinse and start putting things back together. And grab the other half. Let's see, where is that other half? Oh, oh. Try not to spell on my One Mission Nutrition shirt. Oh, and I did just that. Ugh. Ooh, that was wonderful. All right, let's try this again. Actually, not too, didn't get the shirt too bad, but hey, ah, free shirt for buying a bunch of their products off of One Mission Nutrition. So go check them out. Go check out the muscle from Diesel Brothers, Diesel Power Gear, that crew. If you want to get some, uh, get some good, Get some good personal products for fitness, workout, recovery, training, whatnot. Nice, long, boring process, but at least now we've got this channel set here where the new gasket goes in. So that will be good. I do have some uh, gasket sealer too. I'll run around here uh, just to help prevent anything else from getting in or out. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna go ahead and soak these for a few more minutes, dip it, and rinse it. And then go ahead with the uh, reassembly. All right, folks, we are back here and we have the parts cleaned up. I've got a clean shirt on, so we should be good to go. So first thing we have here is our new gasket. And that will just lay in here like this. And I'm gonna throw a little gasket permatex around here uh, just for added measure, especially on the bottom half here, not too concerned about the top, uh, especially since on this one side, as I noted, we do have 
it's like wearing through. So I think for right now, I'll probably just finish it, put it back together and put some JB weld on the outside of there, uh, only for the purpose of keeping crap out of here. I know it's gonna keep on wearing, but uh, at least if we can keep stuff out of the inside for a while, uh, that will help. So we'll go ahead here and start reassembling. Well, that gasket thing is bad. Bye. Now another fun part I'm seeing is that this bushing here is uh, pretty well shot. Unfortunately, I am simply not able to take the time to take this apart and get a replacement right now. So it is what it is and we're gonna have to live with that at least uh, until the next time this gear or the shear pin breaks and I've gotta take the whole thing apart again. So we'll just shovel her back in there as best we can. I've got our shaft here. I did mark them port side, starboard, left and right, or driver and passenger. Uh, those of you who are into boating would know port and starboard. We'll go ahead and slide, slide this half back on. And we'll go ahead and slide the other side back in. And let's see about setting our main shaft in here as well. And look at that, we're back together. So we'll put a few of our bolts in here to hold it in place. work on getting everything buttoned up and adjusted properly. All right, welcome back. I am done with the assembly of the uh, gearbox and of course I overfilled the gear oil so it's spilling out, uh, whatever. So the next step is to go ahead and place the uh, augers back onto the shaft, install the shear pins, and then push everything back up into here. So the shaft from the PTO comes out and it's splined. Uh, and this auger here impeller has to go on there. And that's probably the most challenging bit here is that you have to get this lined up with everything attached. Now, I could have taken out the roll pin. Uh, it's now welded in because it kept falling out. Uh, but I could have put this on, put in the impeller, then got this lined up and pushed it in. But I've learned from prior experience that is about as much of a pain to do as trying to get everything lined up on the spline shaft. Just because once you get everything in here, you still have to put this roll pin in and trying to hammer that in in about eight or nine inches of workspace is pretty challenging, especially when the shear pin is sticking out an inch, uh, inch and a half as well. So it just becomes pretty tight working quarters. And I found, uh, not my first time doing this now, just to e assemble everything out of the uh, enclosure and shovel it back in there. So we'll go ahead and put the augers on, get the shear pins in, and then work on get everything lined up to go into the, into the enclosure. if you notice these shear pins are a little uh, bent to begin with but I'm not going to simply replace them 
Um, a, I only have a few spares on hand, and B, they're not broken yet. Uh, so for right now, I'm just going to shove it back in here and try and get lined up with that spline. Here's a good angle you can see. It's kind of a challenge to see deep down in here. But down in here is your spline shaft that the auger needs to be attached to. So that's the challenge to get that lined up. And uh, that's probably the most, uh, most challenging thing about this whole project. It's not taking it apart, putting it back together, dealing with parts. It's just getting this one spline shaft lined up with the uh, blower and seated back in place. I got it on there. What do you know? A whole lot less futzing around than I expected. <clears throat> so we've got a couple of other parts here that go on each side. We've got sort of a bushing uh, that goes in here and then an outer cap that everything sort of rides in. So one of these goes on each side. So we've got two of these assemblies, one on either side here, and there's three bolts to hold it in place, get, th get those to line up, and that helps keep, uh, keep the uh, shaft in line too. There's just a brass bushing in here, and that's about it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this attached, and then we will be pretty much ready to roll. Fire it up and give it a test. And again, just put together half inch wrench. So you may be looking at these, uh, these skis down here and saying they're not really the factory uh, guides that came along with the uh, snowblower. Correct, I made these uh, after prototyping a, a less structurally sound version. Because um, we're out in the country, we have roughly a quarter mile long gravel driveway, plus a new, uh, new finished area parking lot for now, uh, shop eventually, but that has seven loads of brand new class five that has not yet been packed in and the ground is still a little soft from uh, the excavation work this summer. So I needed something that would actually float on top of the snow a little bit or float on top of the rocks versus digging in. Um, because that's what leads to the destruction of the gears and the shear pins in here is trying to uh, chunk a bunch of rocks through it. So if I'm able to lift the whole thing up and kind of float on top of the snow or float on top of the rocks and gravel, that's going to greatly improve uh, being able to get the snow cleared off. And granted, that's going to leave me with a little bit of a a sheet of snow to drive over which gets compacted uh, but I'm not going to continually be pulling this thing apart to replace the pins or the gears and I'm not going to have to suck a bunch of rocks out of my lawn in the spring.
All right, folks, well, we have this thing all put back together. So I guess we should uh, fire it up and see if it actually goes. All right, so got this thing all put back together. Let's go ahead and just fire it up, open up our garage door here. And see if it'll run. Well, there we go. I'm going to call that a success. So again, pretty much this whole thing was disassembled and reassembled with a half inch wrench. So <laughs> if, you if you think you need a bunch of fancy tools, to fix your old lawn tractor, you don't. You just need a little bit of time and some motivation to get it done. So here's our driveway. Goes clear out to the road about a quarter mile. So down the driveway, around, up we go. Uh, so quite challenging in the winter time, especially up here. Uh, luckily this is all crushed asphalt and melts off pretty well once the sun hits it. Otherwise it's a giant sheet of ice. Uh, next year our plan is to throw uh, more crushed asphalt and then heat it up and pack it down uh, with some diesel fuel on a hot day and a hot roller. So hopefully that will be a good solution for this part of the driveway. Um, and down here you can see, right in this area here, uh, that's where our shop will be eventually. Uh, should be a 50 by 80 building. We're planning to have half of it for uh, cold storage for trailers and uh, hay for these critters over here. Uh, but the other half of it's gonna be 40 by 50 uh, shop space. Uh, we'll end up putting, of course, uh, a heated floor in there, two post bend pack lift for vehicles, um, and just better suited for working on stuff than the garage for the home. So we did invest some money this year to get this, uh, this dirt work done down here. Um, so now we will continue uh, stashing away additional money for our shop. You can see our excavator uh, folks left there uh, John Deere over here for the uh, winter. A uh, little work left to do in the spring. The weather just got the best of everybody here. A um, little bit of grading left to do. Uh, but we added in a large culvert for drainage. Otherwise that area is a swimming pool in the spring. Uh, excavated out roughly five to six feet of fill. Um, black dirt and then brought in scraped from the pasture up on top and brought in uh, probably all about eight feet in total uh, from where they stopped the excavation up to the grade now uh, to bring everything up to a level where we can actually get in uh, and park. So for right now, we'll go back inside where it's warmer and look for our next project. So thank you for watching. If you like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe. Oh, if I run into the armrest of the, if I run into the mirror of the car, Try that again. So if you like this or you don't like it or whatever, you can hit like and subscribe below. Uh, you can catch us also on Instagram and Facebook as Docs Autos. And thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.